when you started as an actress, you got into a great theatre company, uh, the RSC actually, and and um, to get in was a massive achievement, right? Yeah. Then someone really unpleasant hands you a note saying, you, this is months later. On you, the stage. On the stage. <clears throat> While I'm playing Jack Winetta on stage at yeah. the Royal Shakespeare Company, yeah. Somebody throws a little ball that says, maybe you should think of another career while I'm on stage. You can't act. Did it actually say that? It says just, you can't act. Yeah. I'm quite grateful because I couldn't. Right. <laughs> but now what you say in the book, and this is what's so interesting because I, I really relate to this, is that all those years later, your one memory of being in that brilliant theatre company is not, I got in, I'm brilliant, yeah. but I can't act. But that's the way the human brain works. Why? Why does it do that? I'll tell you why. It's, you know, a lot of us is, is things that work really well in the past which was when we were, you know, in the primitive times, we had to be paranoid, otherwise we would have been eaten. Sure. We always have to think, oh my God, I'm not good enough, something's coming up. And that's a leftover out of, uh, approximately out of five thoughts, four of them are negative. Mm. Somebody said we're um, Teflon for positive thoughts and Velcro for negative ones. Mm. Yeah. So we know that, okay? Can you get less Velcro though? Uh, you can get can less. You unstick the negative Look, thoughts? every morning I'm plagued. I've never had a thought that said, what a wonderful thing I'm doing and how attractive I am today. I've never had it. Really? But there are exercises, and that is the new zeitgeist in how to exercise your brain, just like you get a six-pack, where the thoughts aren't going to go away, but you get a different relationship with them. You go, oh, yeah, that's my tape that says I'm not good enough. That's the one that says nobody's listening. So it's a little bit like background music. Don't you find in, in life the people who are most successful are people who don't have any of that? Everybody they, has voices. Do they? Because you look at, let's say, Trump is an example. Jeffrey Archer, the novelist here. They have n Piers Morgan, our, mm, our friend. Piers nothing. Morgan, no self doubt. No self doubt, but it's called an illness. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, that is not. That's not in the. But don't the you package. envy that? Well, do I envy it? It's I, such an I'd like to know what it's like living inside there. Yeah, but I mean, I look at Piers. Yeah. I, you know, Trump's a great example. Trump has no self doubt. Someone released. We played the tape yesterday. Do you see a storm of, of Trump saying, "I know more than anyone." Yeah. About infrastructure. But, you know, the point is, we don't let's focus on them. It's like focusing on, no. okay. you know, it's an illness. So we're not trying to be like them. Oh, for God's sake, if we don't know that by now. Yeah. You know, we are all pretty much, we share the same equipment underneath. If somebody's born with an Ill illness, I got, you know, let them write their own book. Let me they just, do. Let's play a little uh, clip here, because um, you talked openly about your own struggles, and it's helped a lot of people, Ruby. And this is a, a TED Talk that you did a while ago, so let's see. And I had my breakdown during my daughter's sports day. Girlie's running, 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 everybody, except for my daughter, who was just standing at the starting line, just waving, because she didn't know she was supposed to run. So um, I, I, I took to my bed for about a month, and when I woke up, I found I was institutionalized. And uh, when I saw the other inmates, I realized that I had found my people, my tribe. So going to your bed for a month because of a mental illness is serious, right? Yeah. Let's make a distinction between people use the word mental health and mental illness. Yeah. It's like being pregnant and not pregnant. This book <laughs> isn't about depression. My first one was. Yeah. But the point is, um, we have to separate them. And, and this, uh, the stigma is becoming less because when I do my show in the second half, the audience talk and they're very happy now. Because part of the cure of everything, and even this, is talking. Mm. Because we were born to be tribal. Mm. You know, we're, we're the most happy when we're in groups of 50 or 150. Part of the reason people are burning out now is because globally, we, our little brain doesn't have the bandwidth. Well, I, yeah. I can't compete. There is, a th there is a thought I heard expressed recently, which is this, that um, the reason we have depression, in, in, in a capacity for depression in ourselves, is to stop us getting heart attacks and strokes that at some point the brain, the body takes you down because it can't take this level of stress. No, but again, this is a fallacy. D depression is like diabetes is like cancer. It is either nature or nurture. We don't know. It, you know, if you have Both. a heart, yeah, you can, we don't know why somebody has depression. We don't know. It's one in four. So one, two, three, it's probably, well, I'm not pointing <laughs> fingers. It's one in four. You know, I bet in our audience we've got people who've got depression that they haven't told anyone about. Yeah, do you want me to ask? I mean, it's not well, to that, do with my book. Yeah. No, I won't. Well, I won't embarrass I don't know whether I should. Is Anybody it, have depression? Anyone want to talk about having depression right now? No, don't but talk about it. you don't have to. But okay. look at the, they well, do in my audience. You have I, a understand, I understand, I understand. Do you and, have it, Jeremy? Uh, I, uh, 
I've just been aware of the, the fact that the elevator of the mind can go below yeah, lower so, ground, you but, know? But the let's point, just put it like that. The point of, um, I, I think, writing this book is to say, let's, let's try to understand the mind and mm. understand why it's the way it is. Yeah, yeah. So part of it is you're isolated. I'm isolated. Part of the reason it, we do share the same plumbing, there is a bit, you know, we technologically we're geniuses, you know, we make apps that mm. can find a husband at four o'clock in the morning, but emotionally we haven't developed at all. We're Any still, thoughts on this from our other guests? Yeah, you know, the, the thing that really <coughs> interests me is this, that, that some people are positive and some people aren't, because I'm one of those people that I can be in a room with 50 people, 49 can say nice things to me, one yeah. person says whatever, and, and, and that's all I can of think course. about, and I'm devastated, and I take it personally, people go, and I say all the time to people don't take it personally but I do take things personally yeah. and I wish I didn't and, but I do know people who literally don't and we're not the people you mentioned before but you know ordinary people going about their lives don't actually suffer from self-doubt and I would love to know their who they are no, ask an audience everybody no, I, no, I, I, I think <clears throat> I think most people have self-doubt oh, crippling on, on but not crippling self-doubt no, that's the that's so the so and and I think um when, when I get those moments of self-doubt, I always remember, um, and I think it's the people, in my experience, are those that have had validations quite early in their lives. Right. Those little validations, right. that, that's what pulls them through, mm. but in again, my experience, but again, because, yeah. uh, because I, I know that when I have that moment of self-doubt, I can tap into when I had that before, yeah. and someone brought me on, yes. and it worked. If you know the reason, it's, yeah. you know the reason yeah. it's much, it's much easier, and yeah. part of this is to understand the reason. But but the neuroscientist says something very interesting. When we fall down a staircase, you'll remember that. The brain, yeah. it goes oh, into yeah. the memory so you don't make the mistake again. If you're just happy, the brain doesn't memorize it. It doesn't stay as long in the mind. <sighs> so when you're do. happy, just hold on. Brilliant. Memorize happiness. I love memorize. that. 